OK, so in this case, uh, on page 715, it gives you a polynomial. And that gives you a 0. And that's very, very good if we have at least one 0. Because remember, if we didn't have a 0, then we'd have to either graph it and see if we can determine a 0 on our own, or have to use the rational 0 test, right? Where that lists all the possible zeros. And then we'd have to try one by one using synthetic division. Yes, did I write it right? 0 is 3 over 2. 3 over 2. OK, thank you very much. That would cause problems. Ah, uh, yes. And, but now, since we have at least one 0, we know that we can at least verify that by applying synthetic division. So remember, applying synthetic division, I can just rewrite the 3 halves. And then, I take the then I'm going to take the coefficient of each term, make sure there's no missing terms, because if you had a missing term, you'd have to put in a 0, correct? So I have 2, negative 3, 50, and then 75. And remember, guys, what we talked about. If it's a 0 and we apply synthetic division, then the remainder is going to be 0, correct? So if I do synthetic division and I get a remainder that's not 0, I either put up the wrong 0, wrote down something, or I did something else wrong, so I have to make sure I can verify it. Yes, Sasha? Is it not negative I don't know. Is it? Yes. OK. See, I would have done it and not got a remainder of 0, and I would have said I made a mistake. So if you guys can just verify, make sure I wrote that correctly from the book. Um, to apply synthetic division, first thing we do is bring down the first number, which is a 2. 2 times 3 halves is just going to be 3. Negative 3 plus 3 is going to be 0. 0 times 3 halves is 0. 50 plus, um, 50 plus 0 is just going to be 50. 50 times 3 halves is going to be a positive 75. Negative 75 plus 75 is 0. Then remember, we always work from the right to the left. So I say remainder, constant, linear, quadratic. So therefore, now I can rewrite my um, answer as 2x squared plus 50. So that's going to be my other factor, right? That's going to be what we call our quotient, the answer to that. That's going to be my other factor. Now remember, when you're writing your factors, so far we have two factors. I can write my 0 as a factor, right? right? To do that, you can say 3 halves um, equals x. So then you multiply by 2. And then you'd have 3 equals 2x minus 3 minus 3. 0 equals 2x minus 3. So technically, my two factors are 2x minus 3 times 2x squared plus 50. That times that equals all of that. Now, we already set this one equal to 0. Next thing I need to do is set my quotient, this factor equal to 0, to find the other two zeros. And I can also factor that out to get it to uh, linear factors. So to do that, I'll subtract 50. 2x squared equals negative 50. Divide by 2. x squared equals negative 25. All right, so now that we're going to be taking the square root of a negative number, we know that taking the square root of a negative number, now we have to include i. But x equals plus or minus, right? Introduce the square root, plus or minus, 5i. So therefore, your zeros are going to be plus or minus 5i and 3 halves. Anybody have any questions on that, what I did? All right, so you guys can give yourself